Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Lab. So a new quick update about Postman. You must have heard about the Postman has released one extension or a plugin on Visual Studio Code. Now you don't need to download Postman. You don't need to switch between your code and the Postman. You don't need to do all those things. You just simply directly open the Postman in the Visual Studio Code. You can hit your APIs, either it is WebSocket API, HTTP request API, or uh, you can do a lot of good stuff over there. You can write your test cases and everything. So they have released the first version of uh, Postman extension is uh, a Visual Studio Code. I really love that particular feature. The same tool few years back, I created one video about Thunder, uh, Thunder Client also. That was exactly doing the same thing, just like Postman is doing right now. And then we will see how exactly the Postman extension is working in the Visual Studio Code in this video. So this is my Visual Studio code here. You can see on this screen, what you just need to do, you need to go to the settings and then uh, click on extension here. And you simple search for Postman here. So I'm going to search for Postman, this one. And although there are multiple plugins are available, you have to download the official Postman plugin. So just simply click on it. And then uh, here you can see it's not available in my uh, Visual Studio code right now. You just simple click on install. When you install it, uh, so far it's, 7,279 downloads with the version 0.1.1 with the four star rating with eight reviews. Okay, that's fine. And you can see that now the Postman is installed. Once the Postman is installed, what you do, you just go to your Explorer and then you will see one tab is created here or you can see this icon, you just need to click on it and then it will open the Postman window here. But obviously if you don't have any account on Postman, you have to create an account if you are already having a Postman account, you can just simply click on it and then sign in and then you just simply log into the Postman directly from here. So for example, I'm having an account already. I'm going to click on sign in and then just asking that, okay, uh, enter authorization token. Do you want to open the extension website? Yes, I want to open that. So it will open the Postman API, I mean postman.com and then lets me log in. So I'm going to log in with my a gmail account so after entering the password now i have uh, a logged in here you can see yes and then it's saying uh, open visual studio code so yeah it's getting open and uh, once the authorization is done and then postman will be visible over here and then if you redirect it automatically use authentication to sign in okay you can just copy this token also if you have it and you can just enter the authorization token and paste it here and then enter okay and then after a few seconds you can see that yeah your uh, postman is visible inside the visual studio code now there are three tabs that they have given this is a history and you can just simply click on uh, show me how if you have any history that you can just get it over here you can see the collections collections are not available right now it is not going to import your collections over here so collection you will be see maybe in the next release and then same thing here environment variables or environments also not visible here right now if you have any previous history it will just give you the history over here for example, I just recently hit this particular Postman API with this, and then uh, the history is visible over here. You can see my uh, workspace here. For example, let's say I go to my workspace. So whatever the I did in this particular my space, uh, the complete history will be visible here. So your workspaces will be visible here in the dropdown. Dummy API, team workspace, or whatever the workspace that you really want to select, you can simply select it here. Now, same thing that we do in the Postman. Good thing is we don't need to open any um, Postman separate app for that. We don't need to download. If you have it, uh, you can just delete it. Otherwise, you don't need to open that. The good advantage is that you are writing the code here and then you can just check the API quickly here. You don't need to uh, switch tab and switch tab again and again. You don't do, do all those things. Now, a couple of things, same thing. There are three options that are available. You can hit uh, HTTP, WebSocket and GRPC. You can import any curl also. So let's see, I'm going to hit any HTTP request. I can pick any request. Let's say I go to simple uh, any request, which is go res dot uh, go dot in. For example, let's see, I'm going to hit one API, which is uh, getting all the users from here. Okay, this API. So let's see, I'm just simple writing go res dot go dot in. And uh, here I'm writing, let's see, public v2 users, send it. And now here you can see that I'm getting the response over here right so this is uh, something really cool okay now same thing you can uh, check the headers you can check the body you can write your prerequisites uh, scripts also see the 
uh, scripts are available. You can see the examples over here. And then if you really want to write some test cases, let's see status code is 200 or not, something like this, you can write it. And then you can just send the request. You will see the result over here. Here the test case got passed. Exactly same thing that we do in the Postman app. Same thing, you can do it over here as well. Other than that, uh, you can hit any uh, same thing. If you really want to hit any post call, that also you can do it. So let's me select any post call with a JSON body. And then let's see, once again, I'm writing, uh, uh, for example, if I'm having uh, one postman already, let's see, post request already. Let's see, this is the post request. I'm already having it. This is the body that I'm passing, sending the request. And then here I'm getting a, a token ID over here in the response. Same headers, same authorization headers. You can add it over here. So far, with respect to authorization, they have added no auth, API key, basic auth, and bearer token. Maybe OAuth 1.0, 2.0. It will be visible later in the next upcoming releases. But I think uh, these auth initially are more than enough. Headers also you can add it. Body also you can add it as a JSON body or XML or JavaScript, HTML, XML, whatever you want to add. If you have any prerequisites, uh, script or test or uh, any settings. In fact, you can set the cookies also or any cookies that you are maintaining for your domain or anything that also you can just simply maintain here. If you really want to hit any WebSocket API or gRPC or uh, a microservices API or a protobuf API also, if you are having it, that also you can do it. I have one WebSocket API you can see here, uh, this one, and uh, you can just simply click on connect with your WebSocket. Once it will be connected, see it's saying connected to the WebSocket. You can just simply send the request. You're getting the response here, empty response, although we are not giving any message. So let me just try welcome to uh, Naveen Automation Labs. And then I'm sending this particular request. Here you can see that, yeah, I'm getting a response over here. Same thing if you are having any uh, uh, protobuf or any uh, microservices or RPC request that also you can do it. Let's see, this is a, a service URL and then I'm saying, okay, uh, this is the add component or some component, click on invoke and you are getting the response over here. It's perfect. Same thing, we have authorization and metadata service definition. If you are having it, you can import your protobuf file also from here. A script also, if you really want to write, that is coming soon. That also you can do it here. So a uh, majority of the features are available, but some important features like importing the collections or collections, you cannot create it right now. Maybe it will be there in the next upcoming releases. But for the first release point of view, it looks quite promising. And it's very lightweight, very straightforward. And um, after that, if you really want to uh, use any kind of workspace, you can just import also, you can do it. You can create your own new workspace also from here. Another thing is uh, they have given this option like the import curl also, if you are having any curl command, for example, let's see if I'm having this particular uh, update user curl. So just uh, copy your curl. Uh, whatever the curl that you are having it, this one, just simple copy this and then come back here and then paste it here and then enter. So automatically it will create a request. This is a kind of patch call and this is a request. This is a header, all these headers. Okay. Number of headers will be visible here in the body. We are sending this and then send the request. You will get the response here because this response is not correct because uh, is giving you author unauthorized because I'm not having the token for this particular API. But anyway, that's not an important thing right now. But you can see, yeah, you can just import your uh, curls also here. So they actually try to minimize the features because of uh, its extension. It's not a full flash Postman app. So that's what uh, they have given this uh, concept where you don't need to switch between your Visual Studio code and the Postman. It is like sometimes irritating and not a good user experience uh, for the user point of view, for a programmer point of view. Then in that case, you can just simply hit your API, check the response, and then you can start develop your automation code or your framework code or your development code. You can simply develop here like this. So I think this is a really good uh, 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 thing that they have given uh, extension, dedicated extension for uh, uh, for the Postman. And then easy to use. And uh, yeah, that's all. And if you really want to see a couple of other things, click on this D3 dots, open extension logs. If you really want to check that, these are the extension logs that what happened and all such things about the login and everything. If any crashing issue that you really want to investigate, you can just go and check it here. Second thing is uh, the version also that we are using Postman Visual Studio Code extension version 0.1.1 we are using. So yeah, so that's a very first release. And uh, yeah, if you really want to sign out, you can sign out from here. If you really want to report a bug and share a feedback, that also you can directly do it on their GitHub official Postman repository. Okay, 
so looks promising and you can also try and uh, yeah so that's all for this particular video guys i hope you like it uh, please share this video with others who are actually using postman because uh, postman is a daily routine activity every day you have to use postman to hit the api get the response check it for development for automation for test automation point of view postman is a regular thing for every software engineer either you are a tester or a developer so start using postman in your uh, visual studio code that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and God bless you all guys.